Oh. All right, so we're live now. Yeah, it looks like. Yeah. All right, nice. so uh, it seems that we are live, guys. Um, it's um, it's uh, our talk time, motherfuckers, right? That's your that's your intro. It's our intro. That's dude. our intro. Yeah. It's uh, our talk time, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Well, we, welcome everybody. We're we are like uh, we. I talked to Darek. Um, we are. Oh fuck yeah! We yeah, can't hear okay. ourselves. Okay, that's all right. That's all right. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I spoke to Darek, you know, we really want to make this um, interactive as much as we can. So it will be, be a mix, you know, sometimes it will be only me, sometimes it will be only Darek maybe, sometimes we'll invite guests, sometimes we'll do it live. And um, so it, it's not like a stable format, I guess, right Darek? It should be, like we will do, we'll make yeah, sure that it will, but... Uh, yeah, like frequent, yes, but we like, we'll invite guests, we'll like... Yeah, yeah of course, it's like, it's, a we'll it's, solo, it's not we'll gonna go. be like super yeah. formal, I guess. Yeah. Like, we wanted to have like a platform where we can actually, you know, stream things wherever we want. And uh, we were actually wondering how to make it, and we tried Twitch, but to some, to certain degree, uh, Twitch didn't work out that well as we wanted, as we, you know, as we supposed to work. Yeah. Um, and um, since uh, I got um, a little bit of, you know, experience with YouTube, uh, you know, doing like three or four years in a row, uh, you know, uh, level up streams. Um, with this, and Mikal is po who was posting on his channel, uh, Quick Art Talk. We decided like, yeah, let's go full YouTube and, you know, we just stream uh, here, so I think the quality and the, the storage of the videos, everything should be actually, you know, quite, you know, quite reliable. So um, yeah, let's see how it works. No, no, don't change it, man. What the fuck? <laughs> just make it in the middle, you know. It's fine. You can just get closer to me. Hey, <laughs> you like that? <laughs> All right, let's post the info on our channels that we are actually live because we are still, of course, building that, you know, but that audience on our YouTube channel is gonna take a while, I guess. But since we are doing our best to spread the word about what we do at Focal Point, we will try to to reach out to as many of you as we can because we know there is so many people. Uh, there are people that are following us, but maybe are not aware of what focal point is at this point. So we're going to make sure they will hear about it. Right. So. Yeah. Very important that we uh, centralize our stuff to you to be, you know, approachable to everybody. We know, like, like Derek said, we did Twitch. We did, you know, YouTube the, it was first on my channel. Now we migrated all the episodes that I recorded on my own channel are now available on our official focal point. So please, all the followers that are following uh, me, uh, please follow focal point instead because I'll be posting on focal point only. Derek will do the same. And uh, like I said, we'll be like making, it will become quick art talk times will be a combination of live streams uh, guest and advice like last week with uh, John Frey uh, will uh, pre-recorded sessions where we run some demos maybe paint pain over session I really like you know to give maybe upcoming students a taste how we feedback work of course it will be very difficult to simulate that but yeah. still it's something you know something to relate to also I'm very curious if some current upcoming students are joining the stream if formal students are here Always good to hear back from you guys and um, of course from people that are interested, I guess. Um, do you have like a list of questions? I have a list of questions from people that I did not have time to answer. So it's a good opportunity to uh, maybe go through those yeah, questions. Yeah, go, go through that and I'm gonna, you know, like launch all the channels and that we are live because of course it's like, you know, not everyone is setting mm -hmm. up the reminders. So we're gonna make sure that you guys all right. are all tuning in and Mikkel, maybe you can handle yeah. those questions. Those awesome. are the most frequent actually, because like yeah, most yeah. what we are doing here. And of course today we would like to talk a little bit more about um, our experience in the industry. So it will be more like casual concept or talk, but you know, from our point of view, from our perspective, uh, but of course we need to, since we are less than two weeks before we, we start a new term at Focal Point, we, we have to somehow, you know, kind of answer um, the most frequent questions that people ask about the school, of course. 
So, Michael, maybe you can take over this subject and I'm gonna just, um, you know. Right on. Um, so, yeah, our spring term starts in only 10 days, just as like a side info. Uh, exactly 20th, 29th, right? 29th, so it's 11 days. Actually, 10 full days, all right? Let's keep it like ten, in 10 full days we're going. So, I guess like. Um, Today is 19th? And, and that is the date where like everything like. Goes. 11 day, actually. Yeah, 11 I, th day. I think we'll like fill up the rest uh, of the seats, but we'll see, you know. Yeah, full intro term actually was sold out in less than 24 hours, which was yeah. actually quite. And then we had some rest, yeah. but now it's like ramping up again. So, yeah. Um, anyway, uh, questions, right? So. Um, regarding focal point, um, maybe like let's go like into like more individual questions that I got. You know, sometimes like I don't have the time to um, answer everybody's questions. So here are some questions from from Adam Melv Art. Sorry if I pronounce it wrong, but that's like his username on Instagram. Um, so he's a self-taught student. He wants to be a concept artist and illustrator. And he says, I want to begin with some digital still life paintings showed on our YouTube channel. Um, yeah, we did some uh, walkthroughs, right? On our quick art talk time. So again, do, do you know, check that out as well. Uh, and his first question is, is painting from life important? Uh, well, yes, of course it is important. Um, I cannot stress how important it is to have information and the believability worked out in your head and in your visual library before you start designing as a concept artist. So doing uh, studies, efficient studies um, from life uh, on a frequent basis will help you to improve your uh, design abilities, your fundamental abilities. Um, and it might, you know, later on benefit you to use more trendy tools like we, we all see now, you know, that we will be also doing in advanced classes, 3D photo bashing, uh, photo manipulation with 3D texture use VR, on, on, VR on hard techniques as well. Yeah. So yeah, that's what I'm saying. And yeah. Um, second question, <coughs> I do not know where to start such as such as what subjects to pick. And this is where the problem begins, right? Um, that is actually a very uh, sad question. Um, and I will tell you exactly why that is. Because the, the passion for concept art should not come from you only just like drawing, right? When I talk to Darek, when I talk to all other professionals, why they became concept artists is because they have pure passion about a certain subject. For example, you know, um, hardware design or environment design. They have, you know, they, they cannot help but to just go out there and put their ideas on paper, right? So if you don't have a clue, you know, and you feel stuck, um, you should really first solve that because the world is really full of, you know, of, you know, reference that you can really benefit from. And of course, there is, of course, you know, a nice, uh, efficient way to collect your reference, apply your reference. And, uh, but first of all, you know, find that, find what you're passionate about, right? Immerse yourself into a world that you would like to be a part of, you know? I, for example, I'm a big fan of uh, Second World War history. And I love reimagining that. I mean, not the war part, because I'm against war. But now that it happened, it was such a milestone in our Western culture, technology-wise, and how it impacted the European landscape, you know. It is just a beautiful thing to me to, you know, reimagine and reinterpret that in my own way. I cannot help just to do sometimes a study of a World War II scene and make based on that my own based make based on that my own designs right so find something that can you be really passionate about right don't go like don't go on art station and only be like influenced by other artists you know like oh this is cool i'm gonna do that too because you'll find that you burn out yourself way too fast yeah i think you, you'll get a trap you will get into the trap of yeah, you know like following specific or certain style and in the end, it's not going to be as, um, you know, as, um, as beneficial for you in the, in the longer shot. 
because you are actually following okay this certain style or this certain subject and sometimes uh, if we are using for instance um, the same tools as other artists we can have like similar style in terms of like um, you know technical or visualization of our ideas but what's the what's our subject or what's our ideas are it might be you know speaking out of our as our as our style right so maybe one person will like this subject and this will be you know kind of um, I would say signature of this sort of like person and another one like like you know different stuff so you know like just try to find think about out of your of your of your comfort zone that that actually I think comfort zone for you as a starting point as someone who is like actually want to start is going to art station and try to copy other people you know like this is like actually like a you know like um like your comfort zone because oh i want to be like this guy or that guy and try to mimic that but you will be always just a follower follower of this specific you know certain style or subject i and i see like sometimes people you know try to come up with something new but they are very very specifically influenced by one or or one or another you know artist and i can tell immediately oh this guy is like you know more like a following in a footstep of the guy who actually came up with, with this idea or this that style. So so as Michael said, like try to reach out to what really makes you inspired or what really makes you eager to do art. And then you will see how you know how enjoyable this journey of learning is because <clears throat> even though we are professionalists right now, we have like a number of titles that we shipped and we can just you know kind of show off but it, that's not the point here we are still wanting we are still in the in the progression we are still in this progress of learning new stuff and really fucking learn new stuff every day like we are even with Mikkel doing our cross task from the focal point so i'm actually studying or actually you know trying to level up my weaknesses and he is doing the same you know so this is actually going out of your comfort zone and trying to learn new things because even though you try something new it might happen that oh this is something that i really want to do for a longer period of time so you never know it unless you don't try i guess so yeah very good addition yeah very nice that's um yeah, and then, you know, we talk about that in an extensive way in class too. And so many questions coming in as well. Thanks, guys. That's really nice. Yeah, so maybe let's pick up those, right? Um, I have two more here because I yeah, promised this guy to, you know, he has like a this list of This is your questions. student from CGMA or? No, this is just some, some guy that I never replied. And I, you know, I feel bad when I have like a whole list of, you know, unanswered things. So I just like linked him, the YouTube channel, so he can like check his answers being questions too by Adam Bvart. So I guess like these are very typical questions of like, you know, young aspiring students. So yeah, next one, he asked, well, this, I guess this is like the weirdest one, but you know, I like challenging questions. Should I start off with painting with constraints, like only using hard edges? Very good question, you know, should you limit yourself by giving yourself like a rule, like one brush <clears throat> only, or no textures, or max opacity? Um, what? my insight on that can be only paint the way you feel comfortable you right? feel comfortable with, but it's like um uh, directly linked to you know how to most effectively and easily and, and efficiently you know connect that with your fundamental skills so when you're painting don't use like you know don't build up your strokes in an unconfident way when you're like on 10 percent opacity all the time 20 percent, because your drawings will be very milky and washed out and it will look just bad color is color value is value pick it be confident about it and just you know put the the color directly on the canvas right and uh, well, it's hard to like, you know, it's like a whole lecture that yeah. we, we teach at digital painting. But what I'm getting to is, you know, it's trial and error. And only through um, through time and efficient learning, you'll be able to, to get it. And uh, yeah, constraints is, I guess, you know, when you're studying, just, um, just listen to, you know, um, what lighting scenario are you trying to depict by doing studies. 
So don't only see what you paint, but understand what you paint, right? Uh, but other than that, constraints, you know, it's totally up to you. Crea creativeness is beautiful because it has multiple ways to, um, to, uh, to approach it and execute it. Do you have any thoughts on that, Derek? I totally agree with you. Right? Yeah, because, uh, you know, like, I guess the most important phrase from your explanation is the first one. Like, why you should limit yourself to a specific tool. Just do something that actually you like doing or you think might be beneficial to come up with new ideas or actually to visualize things. And if that's, if that's line, it's fine. If that's, if that's pain, if that's like brush stroke, it's also fine. If you are into 3D, just start with 3D. You know, like no tools will actually make you creative unless you feel, you know, this tool is actually something that gives you the most uh, fun to use. Yeah, if technology is responsible for your, you know, um, for your personal artistic career success, then um, watch yourself because that means that you might be on a wrong path maybe, you know? So check that out um, because in the end, I feel comfortable with pen and marker on paper. I feel comfortable when I'm in Photoshop and uh, more and more I feel comfortable when also um, building stuff in 3D. I am admitting it. I, I am not as other guys that like really like smash out ready concepts in 3D. I really like exploring everything in 2D very fast, multiple variations, one after another. I pick one and I start building it in, in 3D, putting there the time, making the geometry Yeah, work. but you are, you know, you are efficient with that and the clients are actually hiring for that tool. So why you should change? You can maybe add it to your tool set or tool bag. Yeah. So you are actually improving as a creator, as an artist, because I think what I feel from my experience if I don't learn new things, I feel very stagnant. You know, yeah. I feel like I'm just staying in the same position. Maybe some people are like, oh, you know, like it's fine, just be there, you know, doing eight to six uh, or eight to four, uh, you know, um, hours job, you know, be in the studio or just do freelance, you know, and I'm gonna do the specific spectrum of stuff that I have for my day and day to day activity. I'm just gonna finish my client work and that's it but I still feel I want to learn new things, you know, and I know that Mikkel is, is the same. So we are still kind of, you know, exploring our, um, not only tool sets, I would say, but also subjects and the approaches to specific things. So it might also differ in terms of like, you know, how do you approach specific things in terms of the subject, right? Or, you know, what subject you pick up, um, or what, what, whatever you want to do, whatever you want to create. And maybe sometimes it's something that people are not really expecting that from you, I guess. So, um, so I find like an eager in this sort of stuff, you know, like not only just, oh, I'm going to do just another, you know, like environment design or environment painting that, you know, people know me from, but it's, what's the point, right? If I want to do something that's extra, that, that I actually, sh that I actually can show that, um, even sometimes at work or even like maybe not sometimes like in many cases at work we are doing quite different stuff than what we are showing online so sometimes you're not really um, allowed to show what you are doing because it's all under NDA and maybe that's the right time of you okay I'm gonna just you know expose to others or showcase what I'm also capable of when I'm at work and, I, and you can use this knowledge and, or, or tools or subject just in your personal work, right? So we are also trying to challenge ourselves in this specific way. Um, but yeah, I think that's uh, it's really nicely put. And then we can, we can move on to next question because there are some. And we want to, of course, head into our uh, today's topic, which is reality of concept design. And it goes along with the experience that we got from all those years yeah yeah let's the last question from the list that I got here from this user I, I will not be able to go through everybody but just at least this one person so his last question is and it might be applicable to the rest of you should I paint the same subject multiple times as in should I make studies um, uh, multiple times uh, yeah of course you know your tenth sketch will be much better than your first one of that same subject 
So that is me keeping it short, I guess. Yeah, that's true, actually. Right. You know, sometimes the idea might be the best when it's yeah. come from the first, but when it comes to like, you know, like fluency or, you know, how, um, you know, uh, how comfortable you are with the technique or, you mm -hmm. know, approach, from my experience, I'm, I'm pretty sure that that's true. Like, you know, yeah. the more I try a specific subject or, you know, like another alteration or another conception, it's usually better than the previous one so yeah i'm happy you're back into drawing you know because you're do painting you do 3d but you're yeah. forsaking the aspect of you know efficient 2d drawing and i've seen Derek doing one of my tasks for focal point because we cross learn um i think that's a nice thing to always do uh, yeah. so we have client work we learn from each other and we teach at school it keeps our us effective and we channel that to our students anyway but yeah um I cannot wait till you post your uh, 2D spaceship designs because it shows um, efficient line drawing from you mm -hmm. and th that your design abilities are, you know, it's a good example. It's good student work. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, that's true. Like, I guess many times that we are, you know, attending our, our each other classes, of course, um, <clears throat> we get, uh, we will go back to your question, uh, Andrea, so don't worry. Uh, but um, we are actually being super influenced or not like super motivated actually by what we are learning in what we are teaching in our classes. And it's the same when it comes to like, okay, our students are coming over with their works every week. They have to print it out and we just hang it on walls. And you know, week by week, you will see how those walls are getting Packed, you know, beautiful. full of works. Fuck it's like so much inspiration. It's like we we call it in the beginning like the the wall of the 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 wall of pain, wall of cry, because they were like so scared. And of course, we have always like very you know um, very harsh feedback because we are honest. We want them to improve, <laughs> but it might it might happen that after a while, after a couple of weeks, you know, some of the works are just kind of you know getting getting there. And we see this wall becoming, you know, becomes from the wall of pain into the wall of beauty, you know, and the wall of inspiration. And we just sometimes stand in front of that and with Mikko, it's like, yeah, this is cool. You know, we try to also, you know, communicate between each other and like, oh, this is actually super motivational. So we have already ideas what we could also do uh, for the next term or for the next bath of students or even for ourselves because you know, when our students are, are our inspiration, it's the best feeling ever. Because we see how sometimes they go from like point zero to point ten, and you can see huge you know, like improvement. The progression is really visible, and it shows us, you know, not everything is possible. It also means that we teach well, I guess. But yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but on the other hand, it's like it's it's like very satisfaction or satisfying for us. Yeah. And actually very motivational, I guess. Yeah, I think, uh, first of all, you know, I mentioned that, you know, uh, cat time talks will be about, you know, us doing streams, doing pre-recorded uh, walkthroughs, uh, doing live streams, inviting uh, industry professionals. But I guess we should also invite some students next time. Absolutely. Like we will. And let we them did, talk. We did, yeah. we did some of those on Twitch, but we are... Now, since but we, Twitch throws our videos away. Yeah, so, so since we kind of, you know, like, uh, since we kind of just, you know, um, change the format of it, we want um, quick art talk to become like a, you know, like a regular thing. Sorry, from, from Focal Point Insights and actually from the inside of Focal Point Newses, so people can actually follow what is happening inside of the school is actually a great idea. Actually, I guess when we, when we can have you know even our students on the stream so maybe let's go uh into the questions yeah i think uh, people are super patient here so adria pindalo morero maybe you can answer i'm sorry if i'm like butchering <laughs> your name here Adria. Um, i have yeah. done a great in video games and 3d animation want to do concept art but a friend said it's really hard to get a job and studies are expensive it's not as expensive as our school i think <laughs> um Anyway, yeah, if it's like... An Our school is not this expensive. But, um, yeah, okay, you want to answer that? And I follow I it up? I could try, yeah. Um, 
Okay. So should I study a master in animation and 3D modeling for AAA games? What's your opinion on that? Do you think the masters in 3D would be a good study for my concept art and still more viability to get a job or should I focus more with concept art? Well, I'll let Darek speak and then I can follow it up. But I think Darek's answer will be the same as mine. So let's see. Yeah, Please. let's see. Okay. Um, so the thing is that if you say that you are specialized, you are graduating with 3D modeling or 3D, you know, skills, um, I think it won't just replace your concept art abilities, but it will be a very good addition. It will be something that will also train your eye on the visual aspects, on the composition, the values, the lighting, the forms, you know, like um, how to read the composition, uh, how to solve like level design problems, how to even properly model or how to properly block out things so you get faster because of course we are concept artists and you don't need to do like um, every single, you know, piece of 3D proper to uh, geometry or geometrically properly. Yeah, fuck that, right? Yeah, but I think it will be a very nice addition and you shouldn't just say, oh, I'm gonna do either this or that. It will be a good addition if you go for, for concept art, for focal point as well. But I mean um, by that, that will be um, just another technique that will make you faster in specific ways. For instance, we had those students that are not very good at drawing like um you know they are so used to uh the tools that are given on today's market you have like free blender you know you have like um you have like um uh, students trials or students uh licenses for most of like a big software and <clears throat> and they can actually you know use 3d very technically i would say very in a very in a very efficient way for like when you have to come up with already um, final illustration or final presentation. But what is kind of missing, I guess, is how to make efficient blockouts or how to, you know, do concept art with the usage of 3D or doing concept art with 3D only, you know, just but with a very efficient way in terms of time restrictions and workflow efficiency in general because um just just you know kind of merging techniques is the most important things when it comes to like professional field and you got a lot of possibilities when you are able to do 2d and 3 3d at the same time rather than you just get restricted to only 3d or 2d unless you are very good at 2d or very good at 3d right so so I think it's, it's kind of, you know, like balancing out the specific things, but since we are teaching concept art, we will still be, you know, kind of pushing you into this, like you have to somehow know what's the, you know, shape language, you know, you have to know what's the composition, you have to know what's the line, you have to know what's the value, the lighting, you know, the, the, the form, um, I would, I, did I say composition already? I think, yeah. But, but the, the thing is that you have to kind of get into, into, you know, being comfort with like all the artistic specific skills and the extra will be, you know, your 3D usage or VR or like all the fancy, maybe not even fancy because 3D got really standard these days, but all those tools that are actually uh, making you more versatile as an artist and the client will really appreciate it because okay they know you from like 2d sketching for instance like let's say like i'm just hiring miko he is like great at like designing 2d spaceships and 2d harder designs but when he sketches like you know five or ten iterations and then he is able to okay i'm gonna pick up this one and make a you know like very nice presentation out of that and next week I see that he made a full block out out of this, you know, this concept made a render in three or, you know, like make, made a, you know, couple different angles and made an epic presentation. I was like, oh, this guy is like, you know, like, uh, 
one man one man army right so he does sketching he does designing he does 3d modeling and on top of that he's able to do a nice present presentable illustration of his in design. a juicy environment yeah let's say it. yeah it's it might be even extra right but well, we teach that too so we have to yeah, but, so, yeah but but this we is do that you know we do that we do that but yeah. we we showed it to our student but i'm thinking like from the point of view of my of my clients and sometimes i talk to them and like how would they you know how do they pick up like we already go into this industry talk but i think it's very vital so if you guys have friends art friends please share this video share this channel I guess we will go in depth of reality of concept design, not once, but today is the, the session that we want to really dive into that. But I talk a lot with my clients and I'm a friend of some of my art directors and I'm just, you know, I was always curious, like how do they pick up specific person by what sort of um, requirements or you know, what do they look for? in terms of like hiring this or that person, right? Because like five years, six years ago, when I was starting out level up, it was, you know, like hundreds of people that are interested and maybe top 10 or 20 artists online that we were looking up and we were just, you know, kind of jerking off their works. <laughs> but, <Dude>. but, but, <laughs> but now, <laughs> yeah, that's focal point sense of humor. But, but now, yeah, but now let's be honest, like, but now it's like thousands of people who are into this field and then like, you know, already hundreds of top artists and we can get like inspiration from each one of them. And it's not that, it's not that easy to kind of diverse specific things into like, I'm gonna just, you know, like be focused on this or that. So we always kind of, you know, tell our students that we should really be very versatile and we of course also um encourage our students to try different things and this is what i of of course also for instance my art directors say like okay we we look for this you know like being a little bit stand out from others in terms of like what what you are doing for instance in terms of like the style or you know the eye for for lighting or the eye for like shape language but what's extra is just more techniques for instance and they will always appreciate it and you will be also more valuable on the market i guess so um i see that from my experience i see that from um, by observing miko as well we were actually we met when we were actually in the beginning phase of our careers like i was even new to do to you because you were already Me in too, man but still, you know, like I was like, oh, this guy is amazing. I want to contact him. And, and I thought the same, like, holy shit, that guy like me is making like, like, okay, the way we met is uh, at a small Dutch company, Isotex. I was making designs and they hired direct. So I was working there in Utrecht, Holland, um, full time because it was in Holland. And since I'm, I am from Holland, I was working there full time and they hired direct through DeviantArt. Yeah, I was just illustrating your your idea, yeah. your, your your robots. Yeah, but that's how you know it all started, and now we're here, and now we are sharing that knowledge to our fellow students. So yeah, but I guess very beautiful answer. Thanks. I have I have nothing to add other than keep in mind that if you I I don't know about you know the courses that are available throughout Europe. Like from what I know, there is not one concept art school that teaches design design philosophy the fundamentals how to showcase your ideas on an there is not there is not any there's not any there is, <laughs> there is one there is one there's one in the center of europe right in a potato country right in a poland right it's not a potato country anymore i'm i'm not i know that's it's, not uh, what yeah. i said you know it's, uh, it's beautiful here i know you know and i'm happy that i i kind of you know grabbed you here like you know i actually migrated from western europe to here guys so yeah i was actually talking to you for for years that you know we had this idea of doing something together like whether it's like you know like concert art studio or like you know teaching school wherever we want to always do something together um and there was actually possibility to do that right because you yeah. were actually finishing up the work on on the latest hitman and i would love to talk about it as well 
since today I'm in a, in, I'm in, I'm in this position of I'm just gonna ask you more questions. I would love to hear more about this project, and of course we we would share. So today's stream might be a little bit longer, but of course we want to give you guys um, the insight from our experience working for uh, for you know specific for specific projects. So maybe before we jump into other questions that are still emerging in our chat and please keep on doing that we will make sure to answer them maybe Mikhail just tell you tell us your experience with Hitman because I know Mikhail for many years and even though he's a great guy great artist he, he is an asshole sometimes he is an asshole sometimes of course oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> but he had like a very bad luck with like um the project that were shipped and finally <laughs> i'm so happy that hate man came out because he was also scared that his project because he worked on for disney ea games and a lot of like leading studios and, and all of his projects <laughs> were kind of cancelled so you know yeah 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 so true. i would love to hear the story of that and yeah. and then maybe maybe you want to ask questions yeah about. thanks uh, that's i'm i'm honored that's that's yeah no, that's true. What what Derek said is um, is uh, is kind of true. So yeah, what what you do, what you have to expect when you're a concept designer. So first of all, you know, I don't want to come across as you know, oh, I'm the all-knowing alpha and the omega, and I, because I'm I'm like a regular concept designer. You know, it's you know, it's I'm not you know some some big shot because I didn't ship any titles actually, like you said, I, unless. It's uh, until a hate month came out, right? Yeah, and it's pretty funny. So I started working professionally since uh, 2011, August 2011. Yeah, I was I will, like a newbie. I know, will like remember a baby crying, yeah. like doing we, like some, yeah. you know, cheap fucks like cards for fun yeah. side games. And well, and but like, you were working too already. I was working, but I didn't know I could step up, you know. <laughs> I didn't know that I could step up because for me it was like it was not enough, you know. I could kind of put up the pressure from my parents' shoulders, so I could somehow mm. earn enough money to for at least buy a tablet or a new screen, you know, whatever. Yeah. But it, I knew that it's not something that I, that my ambition ends, you know. Like I, yeah. my ambition goes beyond there, even now. So, so it's still like a progress, like. When we were talking about like very good point the moment you think you're good enough you'll stop improving yeah exactly like you know like doesn't matter how how much you do or how much you did in the past leave the past in the past you know think forward maybe not te in 10 years ahead because you never know what's gonna happen but think at least about what's gonna be tomorrow and what you are you know trying to do or what you are trying to improve upon to but yeah i'm gonna give you the word again like Let's continue on the Hitman stuff. I'm, I'm going to keep it as brief as possible. Go ahead. Are, because there are many questions. Um, I, ca I kind of like this uh, streaming uh, thing they were having, you know. There is something about, you know, the. I mean, we don't have like a... We have like maybe 20 people watching, but it's still like interactive. Yeah, it's very interactive. Yeah. And, and we can't make errors because normally when I burp or swear too much, I can edit it out and now we can't. Yeah, and I always ask him not to do that live. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, um, yeah. So I've been a concept artist in 2011. I've been teaching since uh, 2015. Mm -hmm. I really, uh, really love it. Um, yeah, and in 2015, it was the first time that I did some uh, teaching through uh, uh, workshops um, all around Europe. Yeah. Um, then it escalated with uh, some workshops at the uh, FCD. So yeah, credits to Feng Zhu for that, that he let me, you know, um, do like a nice workshop there. Um, big fan of his work, always one of the number one idols. That's how, you know, I was inspired to be a concept artist. And uh, from there it kind of developed. But going back to Hitman, yeah, it is my first ship title, guys, officially, actually. It's kind of sad, you know, and this is to give you like an idea how it can go, you know, in your life. By default, on average, I think that 75% um, of all the work that you do professionally will end up being canceled or put on hold. Unbelievable. Or you will never get the permission to show it. So be ready for that. So 
even though now with social media, what I've seen, and let's be honest, we, we love attention. <clears throat> We, we do it. Artists, of course, we are artists. artists without it, you don't... You yeah, don't without do an audience, there will be no artists. So let's get over the fact that, oh, you're an Instagram whore or something. Yeah, it's cool to post and to get the positive feedback or, you know, some criticism and be engaged somehow. Of course, it's cool. You're artists, designers, you know. But when working professionally, you have to separate that kind of... and work for your own you're passionate about it right so yeah. i'm even if i and and that is was kind of my luck when i was working on hitman i was kind of like oh yeah yeah that is my kind of okay luck. but how the, it, okay let, let me just interrupt you for a second because you said that you had this specific road that wasn't really just like linear i mm. would say it was very curvy it was because it was bumps and downs yeah and you were kind of you were working on like huge project. I was actually witnessing it, but yeah. they were canceled. Yeah. And you kind of felt maybe, maybe not, maybe not depressed, but I know that you felt like, you know, like you knew already that you are too good not to have like any ship titles. Like I'm pretty uh, sure. Like, I don't want to use the word too good because th that, like, yeah, but maybe you know, like I, but, but this is my, this is my point of view. And I'm saying you it's were just too bad good. luck, I guess. I just got over it. But yeah, you're right. It's a thing like working on Disney, working on, on stuff on Marvel, and you see all these projects being canceled, poof, 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 put on hold. And then even when I like try to ask for permission from the art director, that was my only point of contact. And I see that he doesn't work there anymore. Uh, it's like, okay, well, never mind, fuck it. But that actually motivates me to do more personal stuff. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Even if I sometimes lack the time. So yeah, what happened on Hitman is. I was, I believe, because when... So how working, did they reach out to you? Because when we look at your work, yeah. we, when we look at the work scope that you've been doing at yeah. Hitman, it's much different than what people might expect from you. So how those people knew that you will be a good fit? How would you say to our audience, to our students or future students, yeah. that you were posting specific stuff? You know, like... We have to be honest, like yeah. this stuff that you are doing, the mechs, weapons, you know, like 2D, you know, very heavy hardware designs are kind of niche today. Yeah. And how those people from Hitman knew that you would be a good fit for, you know, very painterly environments, for level design, for, you know, like um, prop design, yeah, you know, very colorful pieces, illustration and all sort of stuff like that how would they knew that and how people from our you know um, our stream would would knew that their portfolio is already kind of ready because sometimes i feel like people are thinking how would i prepare how could i prepare specific portfolio to get a job at blizzard for instance and this is like actually very bad thinking because you are already kind of limiting yourself i guess into this specific work style but if that's something you love the most go for it, you know, go fucking for it, you know, because yeah. you will be happy working at Blizzard. But you knew that you are very versatile, but your work sometimes, when you were posting them online, they were very oriented in specific, you know, spectrum of work. And how would they, those art directors or producer or whoever actually reach out to you, they knew that yeah. you are a good fit. What would you say to so, uh, this story is getting more and more chaotic. So I'm first of all, guys, thank you for all the patience because we're like walking in circles. But yeah, it's a, it's a good question. Yeah, my portfolio consists of nothing that reminds you of, oh, yeah, this guy will be able to make, you know, an assassin game with, you know, realistic environments. Um, my portfolio was none of that. Yeah, you're right. It was consisting of, you know, some uh, some uh, fantasy landscapes here and there, some science fiction landscape. A little bit of science fiction interiors, but a lot of mech design, line drawing, uh, and now I'm trying to enrich it with, uh, with, with more stuff. But this is where the beauty comes of versatility, fundamental skills, and good art director judgment. So I was lucky enough that I was working with, uh, with an awesome uh, art director. Mm -hmm. um, his name was uh, Greg Wisniewski. Yeah. Um, and he said like, I, and I was curious, I asked him like, so 
given the fact that you know you were guys looking for someone that is you know into realistic interiors and you know those you know kind of urban environments for hitmen you know it was i didn't have that much at the time in my portfolio but the art director simply said well but we saw that you know you stand for design you see design as a whole uh, mm -hmm. your fundamental skills are um um you know it's just undisputed that you are able almost to handle everything so we we took the risk that you know you will be a, a good fit for that you know yeah um and you know i am i am not into you know super realistic but what i'm trying also to show in my portfolio and what I, you know, we talk about a lot and mm. what we teach to our student is to show that degree of versatility, see design as a whole. And, you know, even when I was doing max all of the time, I was able to land that job for, for, um, for Hitman and, uh, adjust myself to their style, to their art director, to their demands mm. and work, uh, according to industry standards to deliver that. And I kept the fundamental knowledge and the design philosophy close. Yeah. So prop distribution was very important in two levels. How to translate the gameplay elements and make it visually pleasing for the player. How to play with light in order to make the environments interesting. How to, uh, how to um, distinguish and differentiate interiors versus exteriors to make that contrast vibrant but still believable. Mm -hmm. All these things, what I'm naming here, it's um, they are used across the, all of the concept art spectrum, yeah. and that allows us to work on a wide variety of projects. That's true. Yeah, yeah. I guess like when someone notices that you are a good artist or a good designer, they are kind of sure that they they can actually hire you for like even specific job that that might not be you know, um, resonating through your works, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Because we show when you show like raw design philosophy, knowledge through the most simple media, like we show like, yeah, but on the we, other, like you show your very fast environment paintings, you know, that you did for destiny, beautiful, just tongue, tongue, yeah. tongue. The composition is set. Like you give the confidence to your, to our directors, producers this. Yeah. Yeah. Th this guy. Yeah. Just but can what, do what, it. what about the guy? Like, for instance, that has like, you know, like, the skills like you have in terms of like, you know, coming up with the, the very technical designs with line art and they are asked to do you know, like full colorful concepts or level designs with all the lighting information that will be handled over to texture artists, lighting artists. And this will be like a vital key art part of like production pipeline. And they, they will be using that for, you know, making the game very appealing. And this guy doesn't know how to paint or how they, this guy just feels the design principles by line or 3D, whatever, but they don't know how to make the, how to sell idea of the mood, the lighting, the color. So the presentational aspect. Yeah. So how, for instance, you would, um, I would say advise those people who are not there yet, in terms of this aspect, because we had those students as well. They were yeah. very technical. They were doing some automotive design, but they didn't know shit about painting or didn't know shit about the value or the lighting or even the composition, but they knew how to build specific prop with yeah. the line or 3d or, you know, very, you know, simple, but technical tools, but they didn't know how to make things all put together in the one bag and make it very appealing. Because in the end of the day, our products, whether it's movie or game, we are selling it first via visual. Yeah, it's visual if, if the visual aspect is good, you might be sure that the sellings of the product will be higher, you know? Yeah. So unless it's like a super genius, like programming work of the game, that everyone is super into that, you know, like, because it has very addictive gameplay, but it's very rare, you know, and our industry is all visual oriented. Yeah. So we have to sell first via visuals. And sometimes if the good design is put into very bad lighting, mood or situation, scenery, it might be lost. Yeah. 
Yeah, you'll fuck up mm. everything. You fuck up the yeah. livability of it. Yeah. And vice versa. If yeah. the game is beauty, but everything is so, you know, unbelievable. You know, you yeah. say like, holy fuck, it's very cringy. You know, like yeah. this building, it doesn't look like it would hold up. You know, like yeah. how it, it's like, it's again comes to, of course, balance because we are, we are kind of finding the way of being uh, believable, but at the same time, um, make stuff that's appealing to the masses, right? So just finding this balance between the visual and believability or functionality is very important because if one thing take over, it might be a failure in the end. Yeah. So. Yeah, I think. Yeah, like when when you were talking about you know people that are able to technically show their design, <clears throat> but they suck at painting. I think they are not totally immersing themselves into the learning what's concept art or what? no 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 they're no 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 they're not told I think that's a very good question we're getting like fucking phys- philosophical here but what what I'm trying to say is when you are drawing shapes with line mm-hmm. three dimensional shapes. Mm. You automatic. We teach our students right to yeah. automatically to think in three D but 3D. doing two D right. Yeah, there are mm-hmm. lines, but we study you know the the three dimensional aspect. Like for example, when you have this uh, cylinder over here, right? Yeah, and the edges are slightly beveled. Yeah, are you going to give it like a fucking rough? line drawing edge no, no you of won't course. of course not you nicely you know yeah just point it out right point it because out a little bit to just showcase a bevel and you yeah. can do that with line art even yeah. before you go into value right yeah so what i what i'm getting to is when you look at old concept artists frank fazetta sid mead um things things is not sid that Mead. old sid Mead, yeah but um Feng Zhu is like one of the concept artists that, you know, I got from the first. But when you look at all these concept artists from even back in the day, like the, what's the name of the Star Wars concept artist? Uh, oh, we, shit. I forgot. Yeah, yeah. fuck. With, bad with names. What you will notice is that they all Ruffle. draw extremely well. It's yeah. unbelievable. They're li- it's undisputed how well they're able to flesh out ideas on paper, on demand almost. And that gets me to, you know, why it is so important to learn first how to draw. Mm. That will teach you how to get a good sense of shapes and three dimensions. And in return, you'll pick up painting much faster. Yes, but you know, yeah, Ralph McQuire, thanks. Uh, There you go. Thank you, Striver. Yeah, but on the other hand, you still you still know it. I'm pretty sure you know that because we were talking about it a lot of times. Yeah. That's a big difference between thinking about how when you, when you have to come, when you have to come from like, you know, doing stuff painterly for, for years and then you have to draw it. You know, I had this problem, right? I, mm-hmm. I know that my um, imagination is good, but, you know, like you feel rusty if you don't use specific tool or specific method that you might be very um, fluent in the past with, right? So let's say that I wasn't drawing for 10 years or, or, or so. Wow. And I, I felt like, okay, oh this is kind of rusty, right? For me, it, it's very hard. I can imagine things. I have to kind of paint it out first before I even do like very specific or detailed line art and vice versa. I know it might be a problem for someone like, we had the student Edgar, I guess he was Edgar, the name, and From, he uh, Lithuania. Yeah, and uh, this guy had like a very nice line, and he when he was when he was tasked in my class to do like environment design of, for instance, specific fortress or or the or the building, he could come up with a very nice, very um, uh, tight drawing, design drawing, but when he had to put like a the paints on, the brush strokes, the lighting, the values, it was a total disaster, you know, mm. until he tried like doing studies in our digital painting class. Yeah. And then his mind kind of opened, but I still saw that he's not as fluent with painting as with drawing. So it might be vice versa for some people. And we, we kind of just, you know, encourage people to do both. So you, you get, more versatile, but not only versatile, 
um, I would say more comfortable, mm -hmm. whatever tool you are given. So let's say that you are in the studio or you are in the office with your art director, producer, uh, director or, you know, like set designer and we are flashing our ideas in the office and some guys, you know, maybe you can sketch out something that, you know, we are talking about and when you don't know how to put things into visual aspect of like lines, you are fucked, right? Yeah. You know only how to photo bash and you don't even know how to draw. You don't even know how to paint without textures and this will be very tough. Of yeah. course, I'm not saying it's going to happen to you if you guys are only in specific, you know, tool set. But we are saying that because you never know what's going to happen and what, what will be your, what will be the need from your client. And what I noticed from my clients, for instance, because um, I'm freelancing, of course, most of the time and I'm just helping on the projects. Um, sometimes on a very short period of time yeah. and this actually helps me or lead me to to ship like 10 or 12 titles per, per year because That's I'm amazing because I'm a great turnaround yeah but it's because I'm just very short you know short shot but yeah. you know sometimes client ask you to, to do like a prop design or building design environment sketch you know or keyframes or color script mm. And as long as you try different things, different methods and different techniques or different subjects, you are able to do that. And I know that you are able as well. We were working together on like some of some of the client stuff um, that I had. So uh, we 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 kind of, you know, you know, doing the stuff that maybe we are not doing every day. But since, for instance, Michael is versatile as hell, he could do, you know, card illustration, he could do like prop design, you know, environment design. And of course he's, you know, like I would say, um, the main thing, which is very cool. So, um, so are you man, for what I've seen, can't wait for you to show like what you did on that movie, but don't know if we can talk about it. Yeah. I can talk about the movie. Mouse guard. Mouse guard. Yeah. The Holy movie, shit. The, the movie's already kind of announced. All right. It's, uh, I had like, um, should we talk about it? Yeah. I don't know. Let's go through the questions, maybe. Yeah, if, our patient watchers. Yeah, if you guys want to know, yeah. um, if you guys want to know anything specifically from from us, please just uh, ask the questions. Uh, we could talk about this. Like, uh, Mikhail briefly um, got you into Hitman world. Um, I could talk about the movies, but we of course want to also, you know, answer your questions uh, since our. Um, our specialities are versatile, but we are still kind of working um, in a different on a different projects. Of course, focal point is is um, our project, but special baby, special baby. But uh, when it comes to professional work, um, yeah, we are working on a lot of different stuff. And the reason why we want to keep on doing professional work is to keep on channeling, you know, the trendy aspects of, uh, of concept art to our students, right? Like, let's say we focus hundred percent on focal point. I'm afraid that we'll become like a dinosaur and stay yeah, disconnected from. The yeah. I don't, I don't want it to be like another, like, you know, like academic school that someone is telling it's just a it's hardcore someone, focus. Yeah. yeah someone is telling the stuff that's actually outdated for, 20 years yeah you know, so, so uh, and of course we have fun like you know when you somehow build your name or your brand you want to do as much work right so uh, for instance um, and you want to learn from those people right and so. you want to learn like when I was on this Fox project and mouse guard as Michael mentioned we we started with a very small team of artists um, I was responsible for world building and environments and there was that guy, uh, Ken Berthlemé, who is a um, character designer. And we were fleshing out the ideas that, that uh, our director had in mind. And the thing is the director already was an artist. You see, he's an artist because he kind of feels that. And he was directing uh, Maze, Maze Runner trilogy. And he got a you know job as a director because of his short that he made while being still 3D artist, which is amazing. And this is actually the dream career path, I guess. Yeah, it's beautiful. But um, the team at the beginning was very small. The movie, um, the, the concept the concept phase for the movie 
lasted for like almost a year, which was actually the, the longest um, that I've been to when it comes to movies and like conceptual phase um, for something that was pitching, then that got green light. And then when there was like almost another 10 months of like full concept production and they are still, you know, putting it into production pipeline right now when all the design aspect or all the design assets are somehow already wrapped up uh, since I wrapped up last month. So, um, so it actually, I will actually, I was actually witnessing a lot of different people are doing a lot of different stuff. We were starting off with like uh, sketches, 3D designs, uh, you know, using a lot of assets that actually help us to build the worlds. Uh, I was also trying to learn new tools like speed tree, uh, using mega scan assets, um, building worlds with word creator and a lot of like different, different uh, stuff, but still, of course, it all came back to the main tool that I use, which was Photoshop for instance, or 3ds Max when I was building or putting all assets into just one setup. So this actually, you know, working in this sort of environment shows you, you know, like how you can guys kind of, um, you know, you know, learn or be inspired by other people. And I saw the guys uh, from Weta, for instance, and how would they translate my 2D concepts into whole scenes? It's great it's satisfaction. Fucking right? amazing. It's yeah. like it's like a different level, right? You might feel like, oh, we are doing really, you know, like some concept art, like some you know, crazy designs. But when you see those things put in life, being set into engine and you can walk through that, it's just next level, I guess. Yeah. And this is actually what we are doing it for, for the satisfaction. You know, in the end, it's all about the satisfaction, being happy with that, being passionate. It's not only about the money in the end, you know, like, of course the money um, in this industry on the top level is good, but it doesn't mean is the main thing that kind of drives you to do this sort of stuff. No, because, definitely not. Because including the school. Yeah, of course. Like the it's school like, is not a big money maker. That just yeah. be honest, but it's something that we are. It's fucking satisfying. It's, it's satisfying. Just, yeah. It's uh, being able to you know. And, I, and and that's what I always say. Like we can met people that, in the end, or on the longer on the longer uh, shot. We can meet the people that we are able to work with or collaborate with on the future projects. So for us, like meeting new, new, new artists, new students is very motivational, very inspiring. And that's also what we, what, why we are doing this focal point school, because it's actually, you know, gives you the, the chance that you never know what's going to happen, that you never know what, who you will met on your, on your, you know, career path. I guess. Yeah. Well, let's go through the questions. Yeah. Look, uh, let's see, because um, I had there are some yeah questions. Is it important to be social from Kaikos? So again, sorry for the wait, but here we go. Is it important to be social as a concept artist? I'm I'm 17, drawing pretty much all day, and I'm kind of introverted. And how to approach that problem? I think to be able to um, absorb a lot of you know knowledge of our world which enables you to design well the key aspect is uh, to be social right and of course there are people that are you know more quiet and you know that is sometimes you know a thing for artists that you know closed in isolated they just do the work but um just try maybe you know just go out you know you have nothing to lose by talking to more people really you can only benefit if nobody wants to talk well, then just okay fuck it just you know yeah like but yeah it is important to be social i think like i noticed you know i was kind of dead when i was like younger you know kind of shy don't know how to you know kind of like speak up for myself totally yeah. not being able to respond in the right way but you know talking to people being social having you know uh, a good network of friends i guess will expose <clears throat> you to the world and in return you'll benefit from that as a concept artist. So yeah, being social is important, right? Mm, yeah, I think it's, 
Yeah, it's actually something that you develop with your um, with your life. Actually, not everybody though. Like, not every. Are, of course, people no. that I know are like like forty and fifty, they're still like very silent, and that's their way, you know. You can... But maybe they are happy with that. You know, yeah. like I wasn't happy when I was kind of quiet, shy, or yeah. kind of dimmed down, or you know, kind of being scared of like, yeah. oh, should I? Because when I get my first job, and now look at you, you're over the place. Yeah, but when I get my first job, you know, yeah. I you remember, like, I, w- I went to UK, I had to fly off all the way to UK, work for Sony, because they found me online, and I, you know, at the beginning, yeah, you know, they found me, so I'm, I'm already good enough, I thought, at the beginning, but reality told, showed me that, holy shit, I don't know, shit. I, I know shit about things, you know, like, it's like Jon Snow, you know nothing. You know, when, you, when I get to, when I hit the studio, it's like the whole production pipeline was something different than what I expected, you know? So I think even though right now we are mostly remote artists, we do all the stuff on freelance or like shipping it abroad. Um, I think this sort of like industry experience of being in a studio is very important because even though at the very beginning, it might be overwhelming to you, it might show your weaknesses and just realize that you might realize that you are not as good as you thought you are. It's a good thing because when you get this kick in your ass and you are ambitious on the longer shot, it will be, it will be like a game changer in your life, you know? So I changed my attitude. I knew that I have to learn a lot of new things. I, ha- I knew I have to somehow adjust myself. I'm in the studio. I'm one of those guys. I'm not the guy. I'm one of those guys. I'm creating something that will be spread across the team. It's a team effort. Yeah, it's a team effort. So you have to change this sort of like mentality. And of course, while doing stuff in house, you learn also the technology, uh, how to, you know, um, be socialized, Mikkel said, but also how to even be, um, I would say, um, on time with things. You have to wake up at a specific hour. You have to be in the studio at, 10, at 9 or 10. You, ha- you have to leave at a specific hour or you can leave later if you want. But I think this helped me a lot because my life before that, before 2014, 2015, was much less organized than it is right now. So even though uh, we are still artists and of course sometimes we have those days, our schedule is fucked up sometimes because we spend up, you know, working hours at night and, you know, we, we, we go to bed around 4, 5 a.m. and you sleep till, you know, like 12, 1 p.m. or whatever. It might just make you, you know, kind of fuck up your schedule. It's still better than it was because um, at least I learned how to work with others in a team in a team effort for the team, not just for me. So this is also a really important aspect to understand in the concept art field because you have to know, of course, people hiring you because they see something good in you. They see the specific skill or skill set they, they need you from, they need you for. But in the end of the day, it's like a team effort and you have to somehow adjust yourself. If you are very self-centered, it's not going to work for you. You know, it's not going to be very, um, I would say, comfortable place for you. But in the end of the day, you might just, okay, I learned how to work with team. I knew how the pipeline works and now my career shifts if the time or if the client base let you do that you can shift always to freelance and then you are the you know the lord of your own time but still are able to ship stuff abroad or you know work with a plenty of different clients but also it goes to like how you manage your time because if you are on freelance and if you are somehow on fire you get too many work too much job projects and you might fail because you are not focused on one thing or two things at the maximum, I guess. And the more you do, um, the less 
um, the, the least quality will be, I guess, like, because you cannot just spread yourself or rip you apart and be here, here and there. You know, you have to kind of, you know, be a good in terms of like choice making. So, yeah, yeah, it's very well put. I mean, like the thing is with, um, but what you just <laughs> notice is uh, being, being silent doesn't maybe necessarily mean that you're self-centered but will like Derek said um communication is the key to deliver quality stuff and when you're more social again that will help you uh um, a lot right? mm -hmm. so um yeah let's see next question hold on where were we uh da -da -da. it was very good explanation okay um now here, so another another question by Adria Pindado Morera. Shit, I'm, again, I'm sorry for butchering your name. Really, from your point of view, what will be what will get a job faster in the industry? Making a master that lasts thirteen months, or joining intro and advanced term in Focal Point School? So right, you know, as we are the founders of Focal Point School, I I'm going to still be fair. Do your research. The instructors that offer you the 13 month course are they working in an industry yeah. are they uh, active online are they showcasing work uh, are you confident enough to invest your money in into them um that's all i can say make your decision you know um talk to our students you know because obviously we're gonna say that our place is the shit to go to you know obviously we're not gonna to tell you that you know I mean, I'm being honest. It's um, of obviously we are doing our really best to provide the students yeah, the knowledge I'm, that we I'm, missed when we were young. So yeah. um, making a master said, okay, maybe you'll get that official paper, but no client ever asked me to show my bachelor's degree or something. Yeah, no one. They just look at the yeah, portfolio. Yeah, it's like it's exactly right? as Michal said. Like so, we uh, we at school we're at focal point we. Uh, kind of makes you work in the industry standard or in, with the industry standard tasks uh, as you get. Yeah, we are directly connected with clients. Like so, like last term, we were both working on client work and then on the weekends, we were doing focal point stuff. Yeah. And we were able to directly channel what we were doing for clients to our students. And I found I found that to be super efficient. So, so but I, don't I, take our word for it. Talk to our students. Join our Facebook group. You know. Yeah, it's Focal Point Public uh, Focal Point School Public Group on Facebook. Of course, please maybe, join. Maybe a link. For, yeah, I can for, put it. For but join. actually, I know that some of our students already work um, professionally. Like some of my students from mentorship, for instance, yeah. and are already sometimes they they collaborated with me on specific projects. So it 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 means that you know at least we we do something good, right? I'm not just going to show off right now. We are just doing it for this, not for the sake of doing the school or for the sake of making money. Because if we want to do that, we can just sell online tutorials or we can just keep on working for clients. We still do, but on the other hand, it's something that's our passion, and we put it into the school physical aspect that's not very um that's not very um uh, i would say popular in in concept art field because there are not there are no schools like that at, um, at least in europe so we were having this idea for years and when we were ready because you you might not be ready anywhere any any time but you we know it's the right time to set up something like that and we see by what our students are doing and how well they are progressing. It makes sense, you know? It shows us it's made on the purpose and we are gonna keep on doing that, you know? So if you feel that your um, like 13 weeks or 30 months, the project that you mentioned will be better, of course, what can we say, you know, like just give it a go but we are having very intense eight or six uh weeks courses here 
and you are going through all the concept art, you know, uh, principles and and requirements that are up to date with what we are doing professionally. So yeah, yeah, answer yourself, I guess. Yeah, like you know, do your research always, but um, we guarantee, you know, the the best possible knowledge that that we can provide up to industry standards and um, to to follow up on Derek um, you know if you find that you know six weeks eight weeks is not enough for your learning curve we have reoccurring students mm -hmm. that also makes us happy that people are actually coming back this term we have last term we had um, your student that came back for environment design from intro to advanced yeah and he progressed example. as fuck man and he progressed as fuck i know some people who are and, working uh, with him yeah in the studio and like the way that we both try with Mikkel to inject specific mind mindset or or thinking about like how to approach concept or um into our students mindset and we and I noticed, you know, how this guy progressed. You know, it's incredible. I'm not gonna just again. I'm not gonna show off. I just see that how this guy, from being just another storyboard or illustrator artist, became very efficient environment designer that's still shaping up his skills. And this is the best thing for us also when we see those people because it also keep us, you know, motivated about this project, right? Exactly, and um, yeah, this term we have somebody coming back all the way from Italy, you know. Yeah, and uh, that really shows that you know not only he's improving, but it, it motivates us in return to do even better work. Mm. And we always do different content every each term. We get better with yeah. how we do things. Every time we have different briefs, every time we have different approach. We also calibrate ourselves to the level of our mm. students so we can focus on how they should uh, improve. Fuck, okay, let's go. Yeah, I'm let's gonna, hit it. Next question. I would like to go with those. Okay, I'm gonna get a drink. Can you do that? Yeah, let's with the ice cubes. Yeah, with you. Okay, yeah. awesome. Uh, I think, uh, what's the time? Um, I'm gonna answer some questions right now. Uh, yeah, we, we hit one hour. But we can still keep on going for, uh, I would say, 20 minutes or so. So if you guys have like any questions prepared for yourself or you want us to answer, please hit it now into the chat. I'm going quickly through the questions that we try to cover beforehand. So right now, so right now I would like to answer the question from Adrian. Uh, is there like a tangible way to measure if your level is ready for a concept art job, let's say in video games, for example. Uh, and he meant, of course, triple A projects. Um, I would say, uh, I would say, um, it's hard to say if you're ready, you know, unless you are being tested. And some clients, some studios will ask you, for instance, to do like a you know, like free art tests and stuff like that. But don't go with that. I would say, um, I would say try as much as you can in terms of like, you know, like being the best in your specific zone. Like let's say you, you want to do environments and you love this subject. So just try to come up with a lot of different ideas, different, different designs, different, different settings, different compositions, and then try to prepare propose it or, or showcase it to your client, then you might get an answer. Oh, your stuff is amazing. We want to hire you. Or it might not even happen that way. It might happen that you are posting it online to ArtStation or to Facebook, Instagram, whatever. And the client will reach out to you. Like for instance, what worked for me and I guess what worked for Mika as well, we were both just posting stuff online. And I'm never, I never asked for like, oh, can I be hired in your studio? So if I had to kind of give you a guideline, guideline on how to, you know, submit your work to the, to the studio, I would be not very fair to you because I just got job because I was posting my stuff online. But what helped me a lot, and, I'm, and I mean that a lot, was posting stuff regularly uh, with different subjects, trying to expose my strongest part, but at the same time leveling up or shaping up 
specific stuff that I was missing in my works. And as, of course, still I shaping them up, you know, like it's still a long ongoing process of learning, as we said in the beginning, it's like a never ending story. So it's hard really to evaluate if your or evaluate your if your work is already ready for 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 uh, for the for the level of you know the industry standards. But I would say uh, if people notice your work, if they reach out to you, if they propose you a job, you know that you are doing something good. And sometimes it might not happen that way. You know, like when you are already shipped tight, when you have already shipped titles and you do stuff for many years, sometimes on freelance, you also have those, you know, periods of time and there is like a silence. And then one at a time, you have like a five or six clients are just hitting you on the email, you know, just one day after another, like, can we work together? We have something new, are you available and stuff like that. But I would say, um, try to shape up your weaknesses because your weaknesses might become your strongest part in the future. So I hope this at least helps you. Uh, the answer was kind of general but it's really hard to measure since the clients or studios have, have different uh, requirements and, and you know, so on. Um, Lorenzo de Sanctis is asking, how did we learn those things without the school? Uh, I would say because we start when we were just, you know, uh, just the kids. I started when I was free. I was just drawing for all my, you know, time of being, you know, child. Of course, I had a friends, I just played a little bit of football, but instead of when I was in high school or even before, instead of just going out and, you know, drinking a lot of alcohol or, you know, hanging out with people, I was just drawing, just being I'm back, Derek. awesome. I was just back at my home and was just doing drawings every day. And this kind of just, you know, this kind of just, uh, thank you very much. Um, you know, guaranteed me the way of like, you know, natural progression, because as I said, I never submitted for work because I didn't know how to do that. And cheers, cheers man. And when I was still doing illustrations uh, for um, card games, for instance, it was hard for me to like, you know, transition from concept art <laughs> to from the illustration to concept art without even knowing how to do that. But happily, you know, you have friends like Mikkel and we were actually pushing each other Word. into different subjects, different, tr trying different things. And then the client just, you know, discover you, you know, you get more popular. Of course, like, I'm not gonna kidding. I'm not gonna just, I'm, I have to be honest. When you are more in front, I would say, or, or when you get more popular, it's much easier for the client to reach out to you because they, you will be more accessible for them. But sometimes your popularity doesn't mean that you are a good artist or good, not a good artist, good professionalist. I know some people who kind of, who are famous, but they struggle with like a professional work because they prefer to do their own job. And that's totally fine because I think in the future, uh, I see myself doing also more and more of my stuff and this is the best thing ever when you can do stuff that you come up with and this is just your original you know outdoor outdoor project and you get a job because of that someone wants to buy your IP you know people you know kind of just you know want to have your you know seek, like IP you know something from your IP or they are really into that this is like a dream that's for the future for now what we are doing is a school, is our, of course, some personal projects, but not very, I would say, not as, um, not as um, frequent as we wanted to. But of course, the main thing is still like a, um, like a professional job for films and games. And if you can somehow balance things out, it might happen that you come up with a, a very exceptional idea for your own project. And this might be something that will just let you retire from commercial work and you might be focused totally on that. But, you know, we'll see, you know, you never know. 
Um, two years ago, I was thinking like, what if I set up the school in Europe? I was like, yeah, it's, I was thinking to myself, like, this is a good idea. It's like a, this is like a dream because I like teaching. I had my mentorships and, you know, I know friends like Miko, maybe we should do something there. Bam, right now we are doing the third, third time already. Word. And this is not even a year that we are running it. And it looks like it's only getting better, you know, because we really care to make it better. And we care want for the students. We're only successful if the students are successful. Exactly. Yeah. Um, is there, uh, guys, how many time did you spend studying before you get a first job? Well, to make it clear, no official educations made us concept artists. Darek did uh, fine arts. And yeah, Gdansk. but I'm not really telling it's true because I had to do that uh, because of my parents and yeah. my, my, my but girlfriend. But they were not teaching you concept Yeah, they didn't, knowledge. they didn't, they didn't yeah. teach me because I have to be honest, I was a very terrible student because I wasn't attending the classes. Because you were working at Sony, you were being because, a badass yeah, already. Yeah, because I was already away, because I was already abroad yeah. doing... Um, you know, just, uh, just, you know, I, and I feel like I, I met some great people there, but I'm pretty sure it didn't give me that much yeah. as I wanted. As when I was starting out, I would love to have the school like that, um, that that's oriented in concept art as focal point back then, because I knew, because I would knew, knew what I, what I, what I have to do or what I have to do to get better or where I have to go to get better. And fine art might be good to shape up your traditional skills, but if you already have those because you were drawing for all your life, it's hard, you know, because those people will not really teach you designing principles. They will teach you how to replicate or illustrate specific things with a pencil, with the gouache, with the, with the paints, uh, with the charcoal and it's good, you know, it's, it's perfect for two years. I was, I was still working for card games as illustrators. It was fuck. It was already nine years ago. Okay. I'm old. I'm old, but it's fine. Getting old. Uh, when I attended the first classes, I remember like for two years, I had the access to the, um, the life model that was posing for us every day. And that was perfect. Like I'm, I'm, I have to be honest, like a lot of, uh, a lot of people have to pay someone or really, really nicely ask someone to pose for you for three hours so you can just draw it, you know, and this really was great, you know, but when it comes to like that graduation time of another three years, I was already abroad as Mikkel said, working at Sony. Then I came back to Poland started working on Assassin's Creed and, you know, like just all the, all the project, it was like a roller coaster for me. So I was like, Oh, I was terrible. I was dumped from the school three times and I had to pay to get back. So, but my parents were forcing me to finish that. And my, my, my girlfriend and I promised it to them. So I had to do that right in the end of the day, but I still consider myself as self thought because all the things that, um, we teach you. Yeah. You're pretty much self taught. Yeah, we are, we are basically self thought both and we still, we still yeah. learn every day, you know, like still getting better. Like I remember my first term at focal point, there were specific terms that I was, that I had kind of hard time to answer, to kind of explain. And since I have this sort of nature of perfectionist, I wanted to know how to explain those things or how to put things into, into words. So my students really understand me and it was very hard for me. It was like a lesson because something that you do for 15, 20 years and you just feel that it's very hard to just tell them you have to do this or that. And I said like, okay, you, you just, you just have to feel that. And it's the worst explanation ever. So we were yeah. really putting a lot of effort with Mikkel, uh, in the last focal point term to explain things better. And even the student who came back, uh, to my class, for instance, he already noticed that we teach more precisely. We teach more 
directionally into how to solve specific problem or how to explain thing and put put those into words i guess and in return our students get better through that yeah of course yeah so when it comes to the rest of the questions i did not do any art study i uh, studied information and communication technology in holland Holy which is shit. Which fucking is, boring which is basically super boring for me it is for some people it's not um yeah it's like coding programming uh, learning how to set up routers networks c sharp uh, all that stuff yeah um i was not enjoying it i can tell because i'm not a programmer I know. <laughs> I'm a concept artist. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, you both look tired as fuck. Are you happy with your jobs? <laughs> Holy shit. I love that honesty. I, I love that guy. I love this question. Holy shit. Um, no, I slept enough this night. Uh, yeah. It's, yeah. You know, our times lately are pretty much hectic, but it used to be worse. Yeah. So it was as bad that we couldn't really make a live stream. <laughs> so. As so uh, so right now it's not bad of course we 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 make sure that we we move at least four or five times per week yeah exercise guys so yeah we try to eat healthy yeah we try like <laughs> we try hey. yeah like we try to also have some chill out right so we are at the stream with you guys and we want to connect with people because when I was doing level up sessions for many years I felt connected to people right now for last two three years i is feel it, is it is it appropriate to drink alcohol on the stream mm -hmm. i don't know it's it's very it's very it's very light it's fine it's fine <laughs> it's like an educational platform in a school and like yeah but you know like it, do you really like this this sort of like stiff format uh disclaimer we are not drinking in class of course that doesn't not. happen of course not um, this is like you unless know, you are at uh, in Croatia and doing workshops, but it's, it's another story. But yeah, it's like um, what, what I went. What I want to say is that um, we are ourselves, basically, and of course um, we try to. We, we not even try. We just teach people, and at the same time, we want to be ourselves, so we don't change. And you can have like a. You know very directional approach to us or you know we can talk about things and yeah but we we are we are we are kind of tired but it doesn't mean that we are we are dead yet we are we are still <laughs> fucking young man we are still fucking young i know that it, anymore, i right? know the numbers are getting higher but that's fine that's fine we are we are still like i have I so have, i guess the next question that will pop up is how old are you guys I'll, i'm not gonna answer i'm just gonna wait for it anyway um Thanks a lot. Uh, are we, I think we're skipping like so many questions. Holy shit. Yeah, Thanks so many. Thanks so, many. so much, guys. But yeah, let's like wrap up in 20 minutes. So we will answer all the questions, um, I guess, in the coming five minutes. And then we'll like wrap up everything. All the questions that are going beyond 10, 1040 will no, not be No, come answered. on. Maybe not cut anything. Because maybe no? some people will just pop... You know, come up with a great question. Okay, no, I'm, I'm just trying not to, like... Because we want to do the stream, like, in less than a week again. So, you know... Like, look, it's only, like, 20 people watching, but still... 30. 31. 30, okay. Sometimes um, 40, so, yeah. Uh, love the stream. Yeah, thanks, Adria. Uh, awesome to hear you. Love it. We love your questions. Love the comments. Love the honesty. I'm all about honesty. We look tired as fuck. We maybe should like work on that. Maybe I some makeup artist before we. I told you not to turn on the camera, but uh, hey. Anyway, hell. Um, I'm still thinking about better setup so we can be you know in a spotlight. But it happens. Like at least right now, I just renovated my my office, so it's it's more it's more appropriate to have a camera right now than it was before. <laughs> Is photo bashing covered in intro class? No, it's no. not. No, no, no. Intro class is uh, really. Um, um, uh, photo bashing only works when you know the fundamentals. Fundamentals is the thing that we focus on during the intro classes. We really do touch up on design mm -hmm. philosophy, design knowledge in the intro classes as well. But, um, but yeah. since it's an intro, we have to make a proper intro for people. And, you know, like by the number of people that I sign up this time, it's sometimes hard for us to judge, you know, like what, what courses will be more... I would say filled, filled up. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> just... 
My goodness, I really like Spoko Pudis in Poland. I would definitely consider going to it as I live in Europe. Awesome. All right. Awesome. You have to come then. Uh, European Union for the win, guys. Borders are open. Come in. <laughs> well, yeah, it's European Union. Yeah, it's can, true. Yeah. It's true, but... Um, yeah, what the fuck I want to say? So, sorry, I interrupted you. Yeah, as always. But it's fine. Uh, I got used to it. Uh, yeah, I'm, I was talking about the intro classes. Yeah, uh, they filled up in less than 24 hours. I'm not fucking kidding even right now. They were, we had like a specific number of people. We always keep the classes like around 12 people per class, per course, of course. Uh, since it gives us more, more, you know, individual approach. But the seats were filling up so fast. So we had to add more and more, more seats. And we have a new place from last term. It is in the center of Gdańsk. And we have like a big classroom, so we can we can we can fit more people, but we don't give any more seats right now. And in the in in it's sometimes it's hard for us to judge, you know, what classes will be more filled. And um, it's an interesting it's an interesting actually story because uh, during the summer term there were mostly advanced people, you know, advanced classes people during the. Um, uh, fall. This was fall. La our last term was fall. Yeah, uh, fall. Fall term. It was half, half. I guess like yeah. a little bit of advanced, and, and a little bit of intro class people. And right now it's like full on intro, and quite a lot of advanced, but still not full. So it's for us. It's 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 kind of in terms of evaluating. It's it's always it's always interesting, and. Right now, we re just to make sure we really want to prepare the, the, the schedule that will really fit to our intro classes. And it will be quite different when it comes to advanced. So if, you, if some of you guys are more advanced and you know your way around, you already maybe work in the industry or you want to shape up your skills, on learn all about the trendy aspect, 3D design, yeah, it, photo yeah. bashing, learn to how to, you know, composite sketches using 3D, using pre-made assets, putting them into your compositions. All that stuff is, of course, being covered, you know, making full out presentations, designing a whole vehicle, put it into environment in Direx class. Um, stand not only mastering your fundamentals, mm -hmm. but how to stand out in the industry. Um, yeah, that's that's all advanced stuff, of course. Yeah, but we don't neglect the intro class. That's of course uh, not. It's you know both of them. They are, are fun, man. That's why we do um, portfolio reviews as well. So yeah, so if you guys yeah. are not really, um, if you are not uh, certain what level you are at or what what classes you should sign up for, because I need to make a disclaimer right now. We are running. Uh, we are opening registration for fall 2019 term in two weeks holy shit so if you guys are you sure you're you're putting that information you have to be sure about that i am super sure why should i in two weeks we're announcing fall term yeah when we start our current term we announce a second uh, okay. exactly you heard it guys it's official it's official yeah so if you guys are still wondering just send us an email with your works with your portfolio with the questions we try to answer every day you know like do your own research if it's something for you of course we are not here to you know do cheap ass commercial stuff um, yeah. we of course have the confidence that it is uh, the shit based on our mm. track record based on our yeah exactly we, and what we yeah uh, so. we have some you know like every day we have like a lot of emails like i i mean every day every day is someone who is like asking question about fo focal point yeah. How is it? What's the structure? You know, like uh, what classes should they, you know, sign up for? Where is the next term? The summer term we have to kind of skip. I'm not saying that we will not any intense workshops because we had those in mind. We had some people initially lined up for doing intense workshops. But since this year is a little bit busy with our other duties, personal life, we also go work. to work and yeah. we also go to Lightbox. So if you guys, if some of you are from United States or if you guys going to Lightbox, Focal Point will be official exhibitor out there as well. So it's it's going to happen 
uh, in the beginning of September, I guess, right? Yeah. 6 to 8 of September or something like that. Yeah. Well, we'll be there. <laughs> we will be there, of course. <laughs> yeah, but... <laughs> um, you rent it for more months. It, it's not it's not a problem because you because we 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 still give a lot of homework stuff that our students are doing off the you know class schedules, and if you are staying till like let's say um, September, we run fall term in September. In the in the not the beginning but beginning will be in Lightbox, second half of the September will be a perfect time for like a next term. So if you can extend it to this this time, it's a right choice for you. And of course, the staying in Poland after summer is cheaper. So uh, so if you if some of you if you uh, uh, GG's, I don't know how to pronounce your uh, your your nickname. Good games. Good games. Yeah, it's it's I can tell who is playing games here. <laughs> uh, but if you if you uh, wanted to stay in another uh, term, um, the the full term will be better for you, um, and um, and I think it it will be very beneficial for you if you stay here after the course because we will be still around. We still have our groups from fall term and summer term last year open active active and people are posting stuff from the from the courses so if you will be posting your staff will be making sure to to re reach out to you of course there will be a summer time that we have to kind of skip but if you are staying during the if you are staying during the um is it stream uh okay if you are staying during the summer we will probably launch uh, some uh, intense workshops and you might be attending to uh, you know super awesome speakers and for the current students or for the students who are who sign up for uh, upcoming term we have like a very good uh, discounts mm -hmm. yeah yeah definitely are we skipping some questions here or no yeah i'm just gonna refresh because my yeah, what the fuck happened? Everything is like blurry right now. Or is just getting drunk? I don't know. Anyway, guys, have you thought maybe about backed up program over the weekend, like intense Sutter say workshop? Yeah, we're going to incorporate workshops for uh, with other industry professionals. It's three days workshops always. Just yeah, just to keep it short. Our upcoming one is with uh, Andre Chambo. Andre Chambo, yeah, yeah, he is uh, an expert with uh, ZBrush. It is like our main pillar that we are missing. You know, ZBrush organic design in three D. So don't miss out, you know, you can mm -hmm. go to our website, www.focalpointschool.com for, you know, details. The, yeah. the, the workshop there is available and on sale. Um, special discounts will be available for current students, of course, like Derek said. Anyway, um, let's see if there are more. Oh. I think if you scroll, because there were so many. I, I'm happy. I, yeah. I'm really happy that uh, you... Are you guys planning on integrating plain air sessions into your classes or as workshops maybe? Well, that's a good question. Uh, I think... I, I, I want to answer that. Go Can for I? it. Yeah, because yeah. I know that we are also making sure that at least once or twice during the term, we have additional activity with our students and we have a lot of really nice uh, places around uh, the free city that we when we are doing um, where we are doing a focal point we went to the museum but still but but seem but still because of our schedule for homeworks and our homeworks are very hectic very intense some of the people are not going out with us which is kind of bummer because we kind of we kind of we, we kind of, you know, come up with idea of doing like additional activity during the week. And some people are saying like, oh, I cannot come because I have to go and I have to, you know, or I have a work or I have to finish my homework, which is great. But we have to really think about if that's going to be very um, intense or not, because if we are starting out like another activity during the week and during the week we give people time to finish work homeworks we have to know 
if majority of people will come otherwise it will be very hard for us to manage our time as well because we sacrifice our time of the school hours and invite people and sometimes they tend not to come over or they tend not to attend which is very hard for us because it kind of you know um diminish our schedule i guess mm -hmm. and it's fuck up our schedule so mm -hmm. so uh we definitely always plan to go like at least once or or, or two days for like um you know like a museum because we have like a lot of cool museums here we have amazing castle uh, very close to gdansk like uh it's by train is one hour so we could go there with the whole group but we need to make sure that most of the or majority of the students will go otherwise it doesn't make sense because the location alone here in gdansk and the whole triangle city and we are we are you know in the center of europe uh, it's a coastal city it, the area is beautiful we have the the biggest castle in europe is like only 30 minutes away by train malborg uh, would love to make like a student event of it we have the world war ii museum here in gdansk which is amazing yeah. we we go there every time there with our students you know um so yeah, these are like the, the extra activities. When it comes to plain air, um, I am also talking to um, to a lot of artists, including uh, my girlfriend that is, you know, worked on Loving Vincent. She's like really plain air, artsy, uh, really into fine arts, really about the emotional color aspect. That in return, you can, you can infuse that knowledge into concept design mm. because um, what she teaches and you know what I can agree with and that's what we also do at digital painting classes is that we teach the sense of value and color by not color picking but to feel the color learn what yeah. warm colors versus cold colors are and how you can mix them to come up with the most what we call juicy colors and values within a painting so um, yeah, we keep on expanding and I guess, you know, the more enthusiastic the people are from the outside, the more students we get, of course, the more successful they get, the more we can grow and in return, the more we, the, the more knowledge we can give away in return. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. You want to answer the next questions? Yeah, sure. There are still some, so let's maybe stay up for Which 10 man? month, 10, uh, 10 minutes, right? All right. Yeah. I love your attitudes. She was a good. Okay. Yeah. Nazdrovia. Awesome. <laughs> awesome to hear. Good good feedback, guys. Thanks. Again, if there is something that you want to see, let us know. Yeah, guys, know. we have 10 minutes. So if you guys want to still um, reach out to us with some questions, please do it now. If you guys have like specific questions regarding the school or, or regarding the upcoming or the next term, please do it now. Yeah. Uh, let me see if I go up. Uh, let's figure out one of the Generally speaking, is one ready for the advanced term after taking the full intro courses? So this is like a very individual oriented question because mm -hmm. some people roll in right off the bat and go for the advanced classes. Some people just go only for the intro classes. Some crazy fucks out there go for intro and advanced. Something that we actually don't advise. See, there's your first clue. If we were all about the money, we would you know, advise everybody to do intro and advance because you can do it. The classes are distributed in not the same time. You can actually do intro and advanced. However, be ready to be burned out completely because we ensure what we can guarantee is that during the full intro term, you'll be working a lot, you'll be learning a lot and you'll be able to keep an, keep a healthy lifestyle during the advanced classes the same although it's two weeks longer so you'll burn out a little bit more if you take the two two at the same time uh, we had people like that we yeah. had yeah. yes we have we still do. and uh, we have still people who took like or people intro. or people that take like for example a whole full intro term and one advanced environment or one advanced perspective and vehicle uh, that's all possible because we want to provide you the choice what fits you the best. However, we normally advise that you just take one term at the same time, mm -hmm. just a recommendation. Anything beyond is like, okay, you know yourself the best. But yeah, if you if you decide to, you know, go beyond more than one full term, you're crazy enough to, you know, um, go uh, take two terms at the same time. We, of course, you know, value that 
um, but be ready for you know a, a, a solid mm. burnout because mm. the knowledge bombardment will be then very high. Basically, bombardment. Nice. It, it will be a bomb. Yeah, yeah. I like this word. Yeah. So um, and some people are become more overwhelmed than others. You know. So mm. yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Next one. Let's like rush through all these questions. Um, what about the summer term? Yeah, we're skipping that just for the reason why we mentioned that. So sorry for that. Um, uh, nice to hear tips, email. Okay, yeah, of course, yeah, email us. Um, our email address is here listed in the description. Yeah, info, awesome. focal point, school, yeah. that, uh, at gmail.com. Uh, we have a high traffic and emails but within two days we always reply yeah right? we try to yeah well we, re we really do within two two days right yeah. Yeah, yeah mostly in a day but just give us that space that it can yeah. take up to two days when should be classrooms 10 to 30 minutes before the class begins ipad my word what 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 sh hey? when should we be in class i think uh, what time should be there what what time they should be five minutes is enough no, 10 minutes to set up everything, to, ca yeah. to put plug in the cables and... Let's say the class starts at 10 o'clock and we start all at 10 past 10. We are not going to be anal that we know we finish at, you know, um, exactly three hours later according to schedule. Mm. Sometimes we extend the classes. It's no worries. Sometimes you know? we cut it. <laughs> Sometimes we cut it. <laughs> but uh, most of the time we really, uh, you know, work. No, I'm kidding. We never cut. Actually. We we work towards, um, you know, that everybody takes the most out of it. Yeah. Your money, your time. We care for that. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So. Um, Hold on. Is there. Yeah. And of course, bring in your tablets and your laptops. Is the most important. Like, I think. It's a. It's a. It's a. Um, yeah. It's a very, very essential equipment. So you you, you kind of get, you can you can do stuff live, and we give you the live feedback, which is actually the most efficient way of like teaching and learning at the same time. Otherwise, you'll be just you know sitting down and you know observing others doing stuff, and we give them the feedback. Of course, it might be a, 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 um, educational for you, but we recommend highly to, and it's actually mandatory to bring your laptops and, 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 and tablets into class. Yeah. It might be iPad or, or uh, Cintiq or small Cintiq, doesn't matter, you know, as long as you have something to do actually stuff that we give you in class. Yeah. What if you do intro and after ending this term go to, yeah, that's what we do. Reoccurring students do that, that they take the intro classes and they come uh, back for the advanced. Yeah, and if you can come in, if, yeah. in, if uh, Adria says, um, that you want to stay in Poland, it's totally fine. Like Poland is not that expensive, to be honest. Like it's kind of cheap, you know, when you compare it to West, West world countries, it's, it's West world. <laughs> yeah, it's, it, it's, <laughs> it's, West world countries. it's, it's very cheap. So, um, uh, if you, if you can afford it, if you can find a good accommodation, we, of course, like just to, uh, already, uh, tell some of you who are maybe wondering, we are setting up the Facebook group for each term and people who are coming over, they are having uh, a, an access to the group and they can come up with like idea of like sharing the, you know, actually they can connect with people who are from the, from the classes or from the term and they can find accommodation together. So totally it's fine. Uh, if you want to stay longer or, you know, people in, in, in Poland, like landlords are usually uh, quite good, I guess, that you can you can always just, you know, tell them that you want to stay longer or extend your contract uh, of staying. And you won't regret it because we'll be back during the fall and it's very high probability that we'll come back with some intense workshop during the summer as well. But the next term will be full and you might be sure that in between of like um on in, in between of this time from may that you are wrapping up let's say 19 of may is is the last day for for advanced term classes and you have like a june july august like three four months before the next term which is a very good uh, amount of time to wrap up all the homework that we give you 
or even start over all the tasks because we, we have some students that are st starting over all the works that, that we were giving them uh, in classes or for the homeworks and they see so much progression. So uh, if you want to stay here or if you can stay, uh, it's, a, it's a very good, I guess, combination of things that within this time you might work up some of your stuff, maybe work up your portfolio and then we'll meet you again in during the full term. Exactly. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> shall we wrap up? Two hours. Good timing. Yeah, it was a good uh, stream, I guess. Uh, very good questions. Uh, I see some questions to me, actually. Uh, how was experience working on love, death and robots? Uh, yeah, it was great. It actually, I didn't, I actually, when I was, You're I was skeptical about it a little bit and then, yeah, I was like, kind of like, you know, like it was just another project for me. Like, uh, I worked with, with blur for like, uh, four, four years already and shipped a lot of titles with them together. Um, since they are doing a lot of cinematics or movies or, you know, like a VFX work and, um, I hope that one day or maybe soon I will be able to show what I've did on the show because I, I, I saw some of the episodes and this mini series, uh, once again, I'm going to mention it. It's love, death and robots on Netflix. It's, it's, it's really good. It's really fucking good in terms of visuals, in terms of like quick stories and in, in terms of versatility as well, because every episode is different it's different story different techniques uh, different style it's super cool um but other than that i was like you know I, when i was doing uh stuff for instance on suits uh one of the max uh episode it was much different style it was more or it was more um photorealistic it was more uh realistic styles and it was great you know like i i had so much fun designing like those you know, um, uh, sci-fi portals or, or, um, the main farms, the houses with like, um, mechanical elements on top of the rooftops in the, in this sort of style, they end up with, it was a little bit kind of, I would say, um, simplified, especially the portals. Like if I'm able to show like the portal designs and you, you will see how many different ideas and how crazy they were. Um, I st I'm still happy to see the results and it was fun, but it, for me, it was just another project. And one last, last couple of days, someone tagged me, uh, some of my friend from, uh, from this project tagged me and I was like, Hmm, what's the project? I, I can see my name but I don't know what's the project. And I just look into it. And, All right. This is the project everyone is talking about on Facebook lately. And I just watched some of the episodes like, Oh, I see, you know, like my work really end up in this series. It was cool, you know, because you see That's an amazing uh, yeah, satisfaction, yeah. right? Yeah. Like, it's nice it's, surprise too. Yeah, exactly. Because you see that your client really just take care of your designs and they will, they really inject them into their, uh, life. Uh, or final vision, yeah. which was great. And I'm really happy and kind of surprised in the same time that it go, it gets such great reception from even the people who are not really interested in art or visual industry. Because the series is all about the crazy visual hooks, right? Yeah. And, and, so. and when I when because you didn't see that yet, I will show you. It's so different. It's 18 episodes and every, every one of them is so different in terms of style, yeah. in terms of subject. Some of them are, some of them are really fun. Some of them are really scary. Some of them are really like, you know, grounded. Some of them are very like exaggerated, I would say. And this is cool because it's different from other projects that I do on a daily basis or, you know, I, I'm really, I'm really, um, sometimes I feel like I'm blessed because I, I have you know, this sort of like opportunity to work on the projects that are, you know, turning out to be fucking amazing. Well, you and worked hard for it. Yeah. But you know, at the same time, I still kind of, I don't take those things for granted. And, and I think, um, 
it's one of the best feeling ever when you are working as a concept artist. When you really see your work on a big screen or really see your work being appreciated by some by people and, and the reception is good, um, your feeling is much better as well and your motivation goes higher and your ambition also get higher. You know, like I'm seeing myself, the horizon of ambition is getting much you know, farther all the time. I see less bumps. I see just uh, the line that I want to follow, you know, so, um, so yeah, we'll see what, what the time will bring. And so far we are happy, uh, how the school is going. And, um, yeah, I think, um, right now we can wrap up. So I think we are super happy that you guys, you, you guys been with us, please. I'm going to be asking for this, but please subscribe to this channel. And please spread the word about this channel because we're gonna do um, very regular streams uh, via YouTube and we want to have connection with our audience from Focal Point community and we want to make Focal Point great. Not again, but in the future. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, guys, I would like to uh, closing statement. Let's keep it short. Thank you all guys for attending, posting the questions, showing the interest. Um, you know, we are motivated in return. Can't wait for the upcoming term to start. Uh, new learning methods. Um, really can't wait what kind of works we're going to see from the students. Uh, I can't wait, you know, what we'll be doing also in class, live demos. We oh, always yeah. do live demos as well. Yeah. And uh, yeah, other than that, I would like you guys to thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed. Awesome. Yeah, let's stop this. Thank you very much. Bye bye. See ya.